Hi, this is Melinda Vallant. This is video number four on Revit 2022. I'm going to go over creating the exterior walls uh, as a starting point for building your design in Revit. All right, so, so far I've created a property outline, so a site boundary. Yep, sure. <laughs> Thank you. I'll just chuck it in my projects. Thank you. Uh, so I've created a site a property line, I guess, uh, within um, Revit inside my elevation camera views. And then I popped on a topo surface. Then I popped on a building pad, which is just a level part of my topo surface. Now I'm going to start placing my design. This is where you need to have your design planned out and in front of you. And uh, of course, knowing what scale it is, so a ruler as well. I always recommend for my students to draw at one to 100. And uh, then of course, every centimeter equals one meter in Revit. All right. Um, or in the real, real world, I guess. So we're going to be using the, under the architecture tab, the wall tool. Um, if you click the wall tool, I think it's useful to know it goes uh, into a sub menu called modify place wall and uh, the tools do change. So you can see that you've got your standard drawing tools here. Uh, you've got a few other things, you know, like extend walls to a corner and move and so forth. Uh, we're just going to use standard drawing tools. Uh, you've also got in the properties uh, set browser, section of your browser, a little properties window, you've got all the properties related to walls. So here you've got it, it, the default one it's chosen is basic wall. Um, that's just what it had by default in this particular software. If I click on this, there is a whole series of default wall types that you could choose. These are the preloaded wall types. Um, of course, you can customize things later on. We're just going to use one of the standard wall types. I'm going to use the one um, basic wall. It is an exterior wall. Um, the reason being, I guess, is the structure of that wall type. So it's got brick on one side and it's got a veneer. If I wanted to look a little bit closer at this structure of this wall type, I could go to edit type. And in here, if I click preview, I can actually see that this is a brick. That is the um, pattern that symbolizes brick. Uh, and you can see here, uh, for that, that uh, the brick is on the top level. And if I go into structure edit, uh, you can even see on the exterior side is that brick and the thickness of uh, 102.5. So it's about 10 centimeters thick, just over. Um, then we've got some air. Um, there might be some insulation like fiberglass. And here we've got some concrete as our structure that could also be like a stud wall, maybe timber, maybe metal stud wall. And then on the interior side, you can see that there's a finish being plaster and that's 12.5 uh, that's millimeters thick. Okay, so we've got an exterior side, we've got an interior side on the structure and uh, you can see how those thicknesses translate. And that's that's just the default wall that's in there. Uh, it's got its own name and all these kinds of things. Okay, so let's just say, okay, we're not gonna do any changes to that right now. Uh, there's a few other things you've got in the parameters, you know, like uh, some properties of that wall, like absorption and roughness, things like that. Okay, we're not gonna change anything. Uh, how it wraps, it ends, and things like that. Again, not going to change anything. Uh, just going to leave it on the defaults for the now. Okay, so just hit OK. So I've got that wall type. Uh, at the moment, it's important to know where we're about to put our wall. So I am going to put that wall on my building pad. Now, my building pad, if you watch the previous tutorials, is halfway up my topo surface. So if I have a look at the elevation, whoop, if I have a look at my one of my elevations, you can see the building pad is sitting there. Okay, we've got level zero, we've got level one. I'm actually gonna change level one to be where my building pad is. Okay, so I'm gonna change this one to, uh, 
2000. And you'll see level one is now sitting directly on top of my building pad. I could probably just uh, modify these a little bit. I can drag these out so they sit on the outside of my, yep, yeah, there we go. They sit on the outside of my uh, drawing so I can see them a bit better of my uh, geometry. I can also create another level. So if I wanted my walls to go from level one and I wanted them to maybe be like three meters high, I can create another level. So up here where it says level, okay, I can create another level. So I'm just gonna click uh, here and I'm move it all the way along. And I've created another level, I'm, it's called level two. I can change these names if I like. So I can change that to uh, building pad level. Uh, I can, but I'm just gonna leave it level one, level two. And you can see that I, it's currently at 5,000. So that is 3,000 above. I did that deliberately because I'm gonna make three meter high walls. But if it wasn't at the level, whoops. If it wasn't at the level that you wanted them to, to be, you could actually uh, change that number in there and you could change it to whatever, you know, number that you wanted to be at. Okay. So of course that's not, that's, they're sitting very close to each other and I don't want that. So put it back to 5,000. So I can change where that level is sitting. Okay. All right. It's done a weird uh, little, bow uh, on the end, dog leg on the end, uh, fix that later. All right, so I'm going to draw on level one. So if I double click level one, um, I'm actually going to be doing my walls on that level. So click level uh, wall and I'm in level one and I can start by placing down my walls. Now, if you remember the, you know, tutorial I did earlier, uh, I was planning on making most of my walls fairly much uh, sort of square. I mean, if you want to do some angles or some other shapes, you can change how your walls are sitting. I'm just gonna make fairly simple little um, house exterior walls. Okay, so there is my walls. Now, something that is useful to look at while you're in like a floor plan is which way your walls are oriented oriented. So if I select one of these walls now, you'll see a couple of double arrows. Those double arrows are actually meant to be on the exterior side of my wall. So if I click them, I can flip which uh, way my exterior is facing because of course I want, you know, the brick to be on the outside. So uh, it's important for those to be on the outside. Otherwise, if I had plasterboard on one side and brick on one, I might have the plasterboard on the exterior. So it's useful to understand how to flip the orientation of the wall. Okay, so uh, that's putting down exterior walls. Now I might choose to put down another kind of wall for my interior. So I could choose um, anything that looked, you know, a bit uh, like an interior wall. Of course I can, I might just do, this is just a block uh, stacked wall. These are all exterior walls. If I wanted to create maybe a custom wall. Okay, let's just say this wall, right? This is just a, a exterior, I don't know, some other sort of little notes in there well but I want to create my own custom wall for my interior walls it's just going to be a plasterboard with a stud frame okay so I'm going to go edit type and I'm going to create a brand new wall so I'm going to go duplicate this and I'm going to give it its own name so it's going to be wall interior uh, wood stud and plaster board. Okay, so I've just given it a name, um, said okay. Of course, at the moment, our structure is still uh, what it was before 
um, the one that I duplicated. So I do need to go into the structure and edit that structure. Now, remembering there is two sides to this wall, it will still always have an exterior side, even though it's an interior wall. Uh, we've got a render on this one, concrete. There's a, there's a lot of layers going on. Um, it's important to note that the structure uh, has to be either the frame and we've got a core boundary. So of course, anything structural has to be inside that core boundary. We've got plasterboard on the, on the interior side of this one, which we basically just want on the exterior as well. We don't want all these other things. So we're going to actually just highlight that and we're going to delete a few of these. Now I'm going to leave finish one. Um, we're going to change it from concrete because of course it's not concrete. We're going to make it just plaster, but it is the type of function that we want. So I'm going to delete thermal. So delete that one and delete that one. Of course, the thickness of my finish is going to be the same on either side. So I'm going to change this to 12.5 12 12 thickness. Now, um, the structure is definitely, and this is not concrete, so let's just change that. So I can click on those three little dots at the end there, and it's just going to be plaster. So if I just type plaster, 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 there it is, plaster. There's a lot we can do inside here. I'm not going to go into it yet, but I'm just going to use the plaster and say, OK. Uh, and you can see the material is now plaster, just using uh, one of the default materials. I don't want it to be concrete. I want this to be a stud material, just a timber stud, timber. Let's see if we can timber joist, truss. Let's just type stud. Maybe we've got a default material, metal stud layer, that will be fine. Okay, so okay, I'm going to have a metal stud. Now 100, that's uh, a good 10 centimetres. Um, that's fine for me. I'm going to leave it at that. It's pretty thick, uh, but, you know, I'm going to make my stud wall fairly, uh, my metal stud wall pretty sort of thick. That'll be fine. Okay, so both sides are the same. I've got a finish, I've got a finish, I've got a structure inside my core boundary. Uh, that is my structure material. Um, and then everything else looks fine. And just click OK. Now, we're going to leave function. It's not an exterior wall. We're going to go interior wall. That's the only other thing I want to change. And then just click OK. Okay, so now you have in the drop down a custom uh, wall type. Okay, so I probably should have changed the name because it's not a wood stud anymore. So let's just uh, rename that. So it's a metal stud because it's the metal frame, metal. So I'll just rename that. Okay, so there's no confusion. Uh, and now I can place that down inside my house. Okay, so I can start making rooms uh, and uh, right click cancel to finish and just keep going uh, to make the spaces inside my house. Okay, and so on. Uh, always double check it in 3D. So if I double click my 3D view, you'll notice that the walls are by default two meters tall or two stories tall, not two meters. Uh, they are eight thousand millimeters or eight meters tall. Okay, that is larger than you need, obviously, if you're just doing a one story house. Uh, to modify this, I could just write, I can just click on one of these and you can see that the unconnected height is 8,000. If I just wanted to make, remember I said I wanted just to make it to level two, instead of being unconnected, I could just connect it up to level two and hit apply and you'll notice how that changed. If I just wanted to leave it unconnected, I could just type in a number. I could just type in a number and hit apply. But I'm just going to connect it to level two because it's what I want. Now, of course, it's going to be time consuming to select all of these and do them individually. So instead of that, I'm going to right click on one, go select all instances in entire project. It selects all those wall types. And the top constraint varies right now because I changed one of them, but not all. I'm going to go up to level two, apply, and you'll note they all now are constrained at the top by level two, which I set up earlier. 
All right, I'm going to save my project. That's it for the uh, fourth tutorial in this series. Thank you.